main job is uh, I always consider myself a trader first and an educator second. Um, you know, on top of running Option Pit, which is a a uh, trading education uh, company. Um, can we all hear me? Just checking. We can all hear me, correct? I got a no sound. I just want to make sure people are hearing me. Uh. Yeah, you know, it, it, that's more on the future side. The electronic side, I was already electronic trading when I left the floor, or when I was on the floor. In fact, by the time I, I was done, you know, when I left the floor, uh, like 85% of my trades were electronic. Um, the, the real issue for most traders now is that it's become such a speed game. It's less about trading. It's more about how to get out of the way of the citadels of the world that want to pick you off. Um, anyway, so I, uh, my, my two main jobs, three really, is one, trading, obviously. Um, two, uh, running this education company. And then um, I do consulting. And so I just got done with a year of working with an RIA, helping them uh, put options into their program, and I work with you know all kinds of hedge funds and RIAs to kind of help them uh, uh, add options into the mix. So, um, you know, w the one thing I will tell you is I will never be my I don't ever want to be in a world where my number one job is education. I want my number one job always to be trading. All right. Uh, so directional trading. All right. Volatility can act like a headwind or a tailwind to successful trading. All right. It can help with basic buy-sell decisions to profit from directional trading. Uh, you're going to discover how to strike, how strike selection can make the difference between a good trade and a bad trade. And then I'm going to talk about the combination of buy versus sell and strike decisions to show you like a little trade that I use that actually is a great. Um, kind of swing trade, if you will, that I, I use pretty regularly. Um, are we? Will we be able to get a copy of the uh, slides? Yes, I will. I will gladly send out a copy of the slides in PDF form. Um, so I'm happy to do that. Um, to welcome. Um, Options and stocks. So the first key to, uh, and this may be a little basic, but we're going to get into some more advanced stuff. Don't worry. The first key to understanding trading options for direction is to understand correlation. All right. Correlation means how one instrument moves to with another, and or one statistics moves with another. You know, so people look at the correlation of all kinds of things. Right. The correlation to uh, Bikes in a town to uh, road, con you know, the amount of road construction, or the correlation of, uh, n you know, number of houses on a block to property value. Um, in stocks, you know, people will use the term beta, and that's really just correlation. And you know, in stocks, a correlate, you know, uh, a one stock can have a correlation of three or four or five to one. You know. Uh, Tesla has a correlation, you know, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, I imagine that its positive correlation to the S&P is something like two or three, um, where, you know, Apple was once that way. Um, a correlation of one means the two instruments move perfectly together. All right, so like SPY and the S&P 500 almost correlate to one, almost. So that is, um, you know, that is exactly what correlation is. So, yes, I'm going to get to there. Um, now, the correlation of an option can never be greater than one or negative one. All right, so an option of 0.5, you know, we're going to talk about this. An option, a, a correlation of 0.5 means the option moves 50, you know, for every dollar the underlying moves, the option moves 50 cents. So that is delta, right? That term is delta. Um, delta is just the option trader term for correlation. Um, it's also could be called slope. Um, I've seen, you know, it's funny. My sister teaches um, 
high school chemistry and physics and uh, biology. And she's like, I don't know what all that option mumbo jumbo is. And she heard me say delta before. I said, well, you know, delta is just slope. And she was like, oh, I get that. So um, delta can change with the passage of time. Uh, it can change because of the price of the underlying. It can change because of strike price. Um, and it can change because of one other major. Um, well, gamma is what is for change in delta. But delta can change without gamma. That's the key. So delta is how ga uh, gamma is how delta changes with uh, change in price. But delta can change because of passage of time. We'll call that delta drift on the floor. Uh, change in interest rates, changes in strike. Um, and then one important factor that I'm going to get to. All right, delta can. Second here, folks. Um, yeah, vault. Delta can be described in many ways, but again, that correlation, as stated above, is really the best way I like to look at it. So an option with a positive 0.6 delta will make 60 cents for every dollar the underlying rallies. It will lose 60 cents for every, do uh, for every dollar the underlying falls. If it was a negative 0.6 delta, it would lose 60 cents for every uh, dollar the underlying rallied, and it would gain 60 cents for every um, dollar the underlying fell. It's that whole double negative thing. So what makes delta so hard is that relative to stock, that delta can just change. And this is where people get confused. All right. You know, again, we've talked about how price movement can be kind of easy, passes the time, throws people off, but eventually they get it. The one that really throws people for a loop is volatility. Volatility can have an absolutely profound effect on delta. It's just massively profound. Okay? And um, we'll look at that. So th this has probably happened to a few people. I used to I get used to get this all the time. Mark! Market makers are cheaters. This is the voice of my sister when she's doing a voice of me sounding. Like if I did something dumb, the voice that my sister makes is this, okay? Mark, market makers are cheaters. Um, I bought all these calls right before earnings. The stock is way harder, but I'm not making any money. Market makers are taking my money. No one changed, no one, I presume put options have negative correlation. That is correct. Um, no one is taking your money. One of the inputs changed, okay? And this is where the idea of modeled risk comes in, all right? Um, you know, the, the weatherman, right? How often are weather, are weather people right? Not that often, right? Maybe, you know, a good weather guy is uh, going to be 50, 60, 70 percent. Yeah, they're not, right? And the reason why is they're using a model, and then when they're wrong, they'll say, well, the wind pattern changed, right, or this happened. Um, there's a term called garbage in, garbage out, and if you use the wrong assumption in your model, um, the delta will be wrong. So if an input into a model All right. The input, if the input into the model changes, then the outputs will change. Delta is an output of the pricing model. All right. So since the Greeks, delta, being the, the most famous of them, is a out of the, is in the uh, an output, it can change. All right. Since delta can change and is model risk, picking the right option for the directional opinion is key. 
What say you to the concept that the only thing that is mean reverting is volatility? Um, I'll address that at the end. That's a great question. Remind me to address that. All right? And I'll talk about that. I may, I may hit that as we talk. All right? Should an option be bought or sold? Should an option be in the money, at the money, or out of the money? It all depends on one thing, implied volatility. All right? Implied volatility. See, when we talk about this pricing model that produces delta, a lot of people think that the pricing model uses, is, was meant to use implied volatility. All right? Um, the pricing model was not meant to use implied volatility. It was meant to use forward volatility. So basically, the pricing model is built that if you can see the future, you can properly price your option. Implied volatility, basically, we take the price of the option, we take the other four main inputs into the model, and then back into implied volatility. We then price that implied volatility into the model, and it spits out the Greeks. So you can see they, they're a moving target. All right? So implied volatility, um, so implied volatility uh, is really the key. All right. All right, so what makes trading volatility different than trading a stock? All right. Over the long term, we know where implied volatility will hover to. All right. Um, and over a short period of time, um, you know, uh, uh, the implied volatility can go anywhere. All right, during the crash of '87, the VIX, the SIBO VIX, would have been gr something like uh, 180. All right, and then we just got done with the VIX being in the it being 10. All right. So the really we knew, we don't know where a stock can go, all right? A stock can go anywhere, all right? But and it can stay there. Volatility has to come back down. So this is a the the uh a, a stock called Apple. You guys might have heard of it. All right. Um and you can see it. You know, it has some. Please, no, no comments, Elliott Wave people. Um, you can see it. You know, it, it swings around, but you know, it, there's no real discernible pattern um, over a long period of time. There's no Apple's right price. Apple's average price permanently is seventy-five dollars. That's silly, right? Whereas <laughs> VXAPL. This is the VIX of Apple. You can see it's been in a little bit of a downtrend because uh, of volatility. But you can see that 100-day, that 200-day moving average really does kind of stay in one spot. I mean, the S&P is even crazier than that. I mean, it almost looks like a straight line during, over, over a long, long period of time. All right. So a stock can go anywhere and stay there. While volatility can go anywhere, it doesn't stay. All right? The VIX may go to 200. It will come back to 17. All right? You know, I, by the way, a lot of you have heard that the long-term mean of the VIX is 20, right? That's bunk. The long-term mean of the VIX is not 20. It's about 17.8, maybe maybe a little closer to 17. So, uh, anybody that tells you the VIX is the long term, the mean of the VIX is 20, you can uh, just kind of tune out. So, let's talk about buy sell decisions. All right. In general, when IV is low. All right. Oh, you know what I wanted to show you? I want to show you how vol can actually change. Um, I, I don't want to, I, I'm going to give you guys some homework. All right. You guys heard of NVIDIA? All right. You guys heard of NVIDIA? It's a, 
it's, you know, it's a company, they make uh, chips. All right, so the stock overnight traded up to 1823 from 1740. Why? Because of earnings. They had earnings last night, or today, right? Great earnings, and it's up on the news, all right? Now, what I want you to look at is everybody write this down, all right? This is the August weekly. We're going to look at the 19 calls, all right? And they went out $13, 13 cents at 21 cents. And they had a delta, everyone write this down, that a delta of 19.58. All right, and that was based on an implied volatility, everybody write this down, of 197.20. All right, and that delta was with the stock at 17.45. So I'm going to buy one of these options. All right, and you can see my one option was a 20 delta. The stock is up, let's say, 4% to, let me get rid of the vol shocks. All right, the stock is up, let's say, 4%. And so they're saying that I should be making $18.00. And my delta should be 33 with the stock trading eight with the stock 1816. All right, now I want everybody to write. I want everybody to write that down, and then tomorrow look and see. So that you know, if I buy the option, let's say for um, kind of the fair value price of 17 cents, um, everybody see what those are worth tomorrow and what the delta is, and that'll be a really good example of how volatility can affect the delta. Indeed, indeed, you are correct. But it's, it's a really good example to look at a stock the day before earnings, or right after earnings come out, the options the night before, and then what everything looks like the, the next day. So I want everybody to do that. All right, now, in general, when IV is low in the near term and especially in the long term and one wants to play direction, it can make sense to buy options instead of selling. All right, when IV is high or normal, it typically makes more sense to sell options or a call or a put spread or, you know, some other combination. I almost never go straight naked. I'm usually either doing a butterfly. Um, you know, you can't see the chat dialogue unless I respond, unfortunately. Um, so when IV is high or, or normal, it typically makes more sense to sell options. All right? So now let's talk about getting long. When one wants to get long, one can sell puts or put spreads, or one can buy calls. Each trade acts very differently despite having a long exposure to the underlying. Okay. Um, so let's talk about short puts. A short put is long delta and short vega. Vega is kind of like the delta. Uh, vega is to delta. Anybody here remember the SATs, the analogies? Remember those? I used to love the analogies. I'm kind of sad they took them out. Um, but uh, delta all right, delta is to price as vega is to implied volatility. That's a great question, and I will get to that. 
All right. A short put is long. So really, when you sell a put, you've got long market exposure and short volatility exposure. So you want the market to go up, and you want it, volatility to fall. All right. Um, now, what makes IV drop? All right. IV often drops because realized volatility drops. So market movement drops. All right. It can also drop because more news is known, and un an uncertainty has been taken out of the market. All right. Thus, the thing to remember is a short play is actually a play on lower realized volatility, lower movement. When you sell a put, all right, or a put spread, and a lot of people do that, what you want, you don't really want the stock to go up. I mean, it's fine if it does. But that's really not your game. What do you want? You don't want the stock to go down. All right? You ever heard of the term playing not to lose? What is HV on this slide? Historical volatility or realized volatility. Um, no problem. Um, so when one sells a put, you're actually do you, you know you're actually making a play on the underlying not falling. It's like you're playing not to lose. You're playing for the tie. Right? You know, one of the things with hockey, right, is you know they've got ties and things like that, and that was actually one of the uh, they used to. I don't think they have those anymore, but um because of the shootout. But, uh, you know, in the overtime, everybody played the tie because they wanted the point. Um, now, uh, so, you know, that's kind of like selling a put. Right? When you sell a put, you are betting that a st an underlying won't go down. Is it easier to say something's not going to go up? Or is it easier to say something's going higher or something is not going lower? What do you think is easier? I think not going lower is much easier. Oh, that was NVIDIA. It was NVIDIA. Yeah. All right, so here's IBM. All right, and you can see the blue line is 20-day historical volatility. And the red line is, imply is the um, cumulative implied volatility. And this was a classic put spread sale. You know, the stock, you know, it's kind of found the 200-day moving average and, and kind of creeping higher from there. Implied volatility is too high, and realized volatility is in the toilet. This is a put spread sale. Plain and simple. All right, a long call is long delta and long vega. So the trader is actually hoping the IV goes up and vol goes up. What makes um, implied vol go? All right, an increase in movement and increase in expected movement. When you buy calls, you are making a straight bet that something's going higher. Makes a huge difference. So here's NTAP. We don't have this one on right anymore. I should, uh, I should actually, oop. I should pull that out so it just says NTAP. Well, this is this is closed. But this was a trade we did, um, and the implied vol hit basically the lowest level that it hit in years. All right, and this was back. This is an old old, old chart. It's about a year old, I think. Um, so the vol hit maybe the lowest level we'd seen in, in some time. And we came in and we looked and said, all right, that's too cheap. And we bought calls. And, you know, they did great because the underlying just went boop, 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 boop. And the IV really hung in there. It didn't go down. It actually crept a little higher. It was a great call purchase. All right. So, like going long, when one is making buy sell option decisions, you have to make it. Um, you have to take implied vol into account. 
when IV is high and one thinks the stock is not go, is going to go is not going to go down, all right, sell calls. When IV is low and one thinks the underlying is going to fall, all right, buy puts. All right, that is the difference. So here's short calls. This is SLV. Uh, remember when silver silver took it in the absolute chin, and um, What is high? High is relative, and this, that's the nuances of really learning, learning options. So with every stock, they've got their own implied volatility. So this question is, what is high for an IV? Every stock has its own implied vol, all right, that it reverts to or, or meanders around. Um, but high is when realized volatility is, is below, consistently below, uh, implied vol. All right, you know this. We had this little brief dip here, but you can see up around here we're looking, and HV is pretty low relative to IV. And people, you know, silver had just taken it in the chin, and people were really worried that it was going to keep dropping, and so vol went right back up to forty percent. It was the perfect time to sell calls because. All it did was slowly creep lower and then just die. It was a great call sale. So now here's puts. Um, in this case, we were looking and we had the Fed announcement coming up about whether or not they were going to taper. We had an announcement coming up about whether they were going to, you know, what they were going to do, all the different pieces. You know, what a what are the pieces that the Fed is going to start? All right, and we're looking, and IYR is moving around pretty aggressively, and underlying implied vol is really low in our opinion, and so we set up a long put put trade, and basically wrote it down from 75 to about 65. It was a great purchase. So high is relative. So high is where do implied vols usually go? You know, what's the peak, what's the trough in the long term and in the near term? And also, how much movement, how is the stock actually moving? That is a nice tool. What is the the upper chart is the underlying price, the lower chart is is volatility. This is the IV. So I'll show you what I'm looking at. So this was Nvidia that we were just talking about. And that is some high implied vol. And we were all about selling this. We were all looking at this and thinking it was too expensive today. And I'll tell you why. We were looking at the earnings, and it was it doesn't move that much on earnings. It really doesn't. You know, um, very rarely. You know, this, this little thing that gives you the straddle price the week before and the week after. You will get some expansion, but uh, it's usually not earnings. It's kind of the follow-through on earnings. So NVIDIA very likely is going to keep moving higher because it typically does have follow-through on its earnings. All right. So strike now. Let's talk strike selection. So any, any questions on what I just covered? The blue line, the are fifty. The red, so the red line and the blue line are fifty and two hundred day moving average. That is correct. All right. That is not thinkorswim. This is called live vol. Although I do use thinkorswim as well. What about selling in, sell, s selling in the money puts for a long directional bias? 
I mean, selling an inlet money put is basically the same as doing a, a covered call trade. I'd rather collect the premium. All right, the next step is to select the right strike. All right, this is done based on the certainty of the next vol move. All right, when one believes that IV is going to go up, all right, all right, and one wants to buy, one uses what's called a soft delta. All right, if one believes IV is going to go up and they want to sell something, sell vol, you need to use a hard delta. All right. When one believes that IV is going to be stable or go down, and one wants to get get buy options using a hard delta can make sense. When one believes that IV is going to go down, and one wants to sell a put or a call, then a soft delta makes more sense. It's not really a newsletter. We have what we call the, um, what we call the strategy letter. And you know what we do is on a daily basis we kind of talk about for about 45 minutes we spend some time talking about the market what we're seeing and we put on trades for kind of learning but we do track um, the performance and uh, how it's done soft delta means usually out of the money think about it that way what is a soft delta it's an out of the money delta and a, and a hard delta is kind of in the money. I don't use stockcharts.com. Yes, the toss, no to stockcharts.com. Um, so a hard delta, a hard delta is relatively resistant to changes in volatility. Soft deltas are relatively dependent on changes in volatility. Understanding the difference can help a lot with strike selection. All right. So when would one want to use a hard delta? All right. When one isn't sure of the IV future movement, all right. When IV is very high, all right, and you're and you're buying, all right. When one isn't sure of the severity of the expected move, but wants to have limited risk. So we're going to look at Goldman. You guys, big fans of Goldman Sachs. Bunch of cheaters. Not you guys, Goldman. They're a bunch of cheaters. Seriously. It was funny though that there was a nice little tell with them. Anytime they, when they came in with a trade, anytime their upstairs desk also wanted to participate in the trade, you did as much of it as you could. All right. When they wanted to give us the whole thing, you said uh, no thanks. Anything above like a 65 delta is going to have a hard is going to be hard. All right. So now take a look at Goldman here. All right, and you're you're sitting here. Goldman's around 114 at the time, and you're sitting here thinking, okay, I think Goldman's bottomed out, and I think it's going to go higher. Um, and but and I want to buy calls. Look at that vol. Really, you could think about selling puts as well. That'd be your other option. Probably would be the better trade. But in this case, we're going to buy calls because we think the stock's going up. Do you need at least 80% success rate to break even on selling bull put bear calls, assuming a dollar profit, four dollars margin risk rate? Um, well, no, because you shouldn't lose four bucks. Right. If you practice good risk management, um, you should only need a success rate probably just a little bit north of 50%. So let's look at Gulpin. So we've got two trades we can do. We can buy the uh, Goldman, the Goldman uh, December 110 calls. Or we can buy the Goldman, say equal dollar, by the Goldman December 125 calls. This was, no, this was a regular, I believe. 
No, it was a weekly. It was the D's 22s. It might have been the, I don't know. I honestly don't remember. So on 115, Goldman Sachs is trading uh, 115.44. I buy one Goldman Sachs call, and I pay $7.60 to acquire 70 deltas, right? You see how I got 70 delta? Or I can buy eight Goldman Sachs December 125 calls for 96 cents and acquire 130 deltas. All right, and you see how I got that, right? It's just the 16 times the, the uh, eight that we bought. Or the 17 times the eight we bought. So now on 123, about a week later, I can sell one of my Goldman Sachs December 110 calls at $10.65. That's a profit of 305 bucks. Call it 50, a little less than 50%. Or I sell, uh, the alternative, if I bought the eight 125 calls, I would sell them at 119 and I would collect a dollar, I'd only make a profit of a dollar 84, $184. So let me get this straight. I bought 130 deltas versus 70 deltas, and I made more money owning the, the one call versus the eight calls. The hard delta was the better trade. Well, yeah, I mean, the out of the money was, I'm out of the money by 10 points. And what happened? Well, you can see that vol, volatility, came in about two points on the 110 calls. But came in four points on the 125 calls. You absolutely got murdered. All right, now, as soft deltas are more sensitive to changes in IV, there are some very specific times where they can make a lot of sense. IV is low. Uh, you're expecting a major move, um, some sort of cheap bet trade, you know, a nickel option, if you will. So now here's IBM again, old big blue. Um, and you can see volatility is absolutely in the toilet, as I like to say, the toilet. The, it's in... It's in the, the, the gutter, all right? So on 121, I can buy the 680 calls. I can buy one 185 call for 680, or I can buy one 195, call, or I can buy a bunch of 195 calls for 122. Let's see how we perform. Um, so IBM closes 190.29 on my December 185 call for 680. I buy 75 deltas, or I buy I spend 610 bucks, 70 dollars less, and I buy five calls for 122 and acquire 145 deltas. Well, lo and behold, look how I do with the stock up. You know I make. On my one call, I make 250 bucks. On my five calls, I make $515, almost 100%. And what happened? Well, look, vol went up. You see how that works? Pretty simple, right? All right, so now I'm going to give you my favorite simple out-of-the-money call play that I do, combining buy versus sell and strike decisions. So you're saying buy out of the money. When vol is just dirt cheap, thank you very much. Why not have done a spread when vol is high with buy? Yeah, well, I'm trying to, this is a very simple explanation, right? I'm not digging into all the different ways of doing these. I didn't do these trades. All right, they're just very clear examples. All right, most of my trading is done in VIX, just an FYI. So this is, I think this is a fun little trade, all right? 
follow the, you know, you don't have to have live ball to really track volatility well. All right. There's these uh, indexes. So here's VXGS. That is the VIX methodology applied to Goldman. Look at that. It's higher than it was at earnings. You know what I suggested doing yesterday in Goldman? What do you think? Put spread. Exactly. Slightly out of the money. So you follow the VIX methodologies that the CBOE puts out. When a stock hits a 52-week high or is right near its 52-week high, and that VIX index hits a 52-week low simultaneously. All right, this is one of those scanners I use. I'm constantly doing this trade. So when a stock hits a 52-week high, VX hits at or near a 52-week low, try buying an out-of-the-money call. And I'll show you Goldman. We did this one. This was a great trade. So Goldman has their earnings. Gets a nice little move, right? right around the 15th, all right, stabilizes on the 15th, and they absolutely just tank volatility. They crushed it, absolutely murdered it. So when the underlying hits a 52-week high and the VX of the underlying hits a 52-week low, all right, so this is VXGS hitting a 52-week low, and Goldman hits a 52-week high, or right near it, certainly a recent high. Well, guess what? You buy a call, you make a killing. So let's, uh, I'll quickly show you how well you could have done. And I know everybody wants to get on with their day, so I will just... Uh, We'll be ready here. So let me show you this. There you go. Um, and I actually wrote this out, I think, for the street.com. So if you go to like August and you buy the 175 calls for, let's say, 90 cents. With the vault, with vault at 1570, look how quickly you, you make a lot of money. So let's let's just say you bought uh, 10 of those for 90 cents, 900 dollars, for something that's 3% out of the money less, and has about a month to go. So we're, uh, we've gone through, it's been a week. Vol's lower, but my calls are killing it. Then you get a little more bid in vol, things get even better. So your ten, your $900 turns into almost 4000 And, you know, don't start out with 10 lots, start out with a one lot, but this is a relatively effective way um, I typically buy like a 30, a 30 delta, about a 30, 30 delta, and typically I like to give it at least a, a least 30 days on that expiring call. All right, so when I'm doing this, I'm looking for something 30 to 45 days, and I'm looking for about a 35 delta, a 30 or 35 delta. It is a great, great, great. I use it all the time. Um, if you if you know I do some writing for the street, this one I put out all the time. So in summary, volatility reverts. Implied volatility helps form positions. There are different types of delta for different positions. Uh, is the position sensitive to changes in IV? Uh, the hard or soft? All right. So now I starting Wednesday. All right. I have a four day boot camp. All right, and I'm going to cover all kinds of stuff. It's going to be me and Andrew who's my, my numero dos in the firm. Um, you know, I, I typically, I have some, uh, someone said, how long do you hold?
until expiration? No, no. I actually typically am trying to make about 100% on my on these purchases, and I'm willing to get to lose 50%. And I'm right about, and it works more than you know, a little more than 50/50. So it's got a really nice return. All right. So this is going to be at least six hours of education, probably six to eight. Um, we're going to cover using options with stocks. So we're going to cover the wheel trade, all right, which um, is a, a selling strategy that I use. All right, we're going to cover you know some covered calls, basic basic things like that. Then we're going to talk about you know a more more directional trading using um, spreads, using flies, using broken wing butterflies, using front spreads. Then we're going to get into non-directional trading, things like butterflies, condors, things like that, and then we'll bring it together with some risk management. If you've been kicking the tires on working with me or you've never worked with me, this is a great opportunity to check things out. Now, the last time we did this, we charged 400 and, a lot, and people loved it and thought it was a great value. Um, because I want to kind of reach a, uh, to more people, we're running this at $147. Um, I'm limiting it the, the room to 200 seats because uh, that's how many go-to training can take. Um, so it legitimately does have two, a 200-person limit. Um, we're going to record all of them. You get to keep them. And because uh, the, you know Steve Bigelow is a good guy and uh, you guys are all good people, use coupon code CANDLE to take thir an extra 30 bucks off, so only $117 instead of... Um, 147. So, pretty good deal. And, uh, you know, we're going to have fun. Uh, it, it is being recorded and will be emailed out. And, the yes, you'll get to keep the boot camp. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll learn a lot. What about people who work full time? It's actually going to be taught at 6 Eastern on Wednesday the 13th, 6 Eastern on Thursday the 14th, and then in the, the and then on the morning of Saturday the 16th, so it's it's going to be in the evening so that when you work full time you can see it and catch it and watch it and yes we'll put out all the recordings. Do you have a hyperlink you can put up? I sure do. It's optionpit.com/bootcamp. Well, we'll have a recording, um, and if you can't make it, uh, we're going to run it at probably a slightly more expensive price in November. Yeah, I know. I like your name, Sebastian. Um, 6 p.m. Eastern is the middle of the afternoon here in California. Well, it'll be recorded, and then, you know, we've got the two Saturdays. Is it worth the rolling even if one cannot attend live? I think so. I do. Um, and uh, tell you what, if if you don't, if you don't get what you want, it also comes with a free week of my um, chat room. Right? Is tonight's being emailed out? Indeed. I, yes, I will send the replay out. I promise. Miguel Cabrera, don't you have a Tigers game to play at, to to go uh, play? Um. We will be able to come next one if we sign up this one and can't. Yeah, that'd be fine. And can't make all the sections? Probably. Probably. Um, does the ordering process make me buy other stuff? No, it does not. No, it doesn't. Yeah, maybe on a diet. Maybe a diet. Um, have I applied my technique? I trade a ton of weeklies. I do. Um, but I would not use 30-day IV to measure a weekly trading approach. Because 30-day IV measures all 30 days out. But what I will do is, um, well, I'll use the weekly sometimes as kind of like, when I do an out-of-the-money trade, out trade like that, where something like that could have made some sense is on like a, as a, like a diagonal spread or a, a calendar spread. I think it does, and if not, um, you know, I'll figure out a way to make up to you. All right, so now let's, does any, 
Do all the stocks have SIBO IV symbols? No, there's only about six of them. You enroll, go to www.optionpit.com slash bootcamp. Do you use strangles on weeklies after events? You know, I, I typically don't do, I mean, yes, but I don't like to teach a lot with strangles because um, the margin crush on those can be a real pain, and a lot of people don't have portfolio margin. Um, I actually prefer one by twos to strangles anyway. You know what a one by two is? It's up for me. Might just be a little slow. Maybe a lot of people trying to get out once. Could be that. So give it, give it some time. No, it doesn't look like there's that many people logged in. All right, good. All right. Well, hey, let me know if... Uh, if you guys have any questions or um, if you can show me how to bankrupt Goldman Sachs, I'll buy triple the price. That's great. Is this good for a small account? Yeah, we designed our, our whole stuff for a small account. Our strategy letter is based on, a, uh, started with a $15,000 uh, $15, account. Is the wheel trade, is that buy stock, sell calls, have the stock taken away, sell puts? And Well, it starts with sell puts. Then it goes to, then it's, then it's, uh, so you've got almost our right. So it's sell puts, take delivery, then sell calls. Thank you, Dr. It's Dr. Sebastian was my grandfather and my, uh, my uncle, not, uh, not me. What platforms do you use to recommend? I use LiveVault and Thinkorswim and Trade Monster and Options Express. And do you recover how to repair bad, I mean, adjustments? Absolutely. Certainly for uh, the code is candle. The code is going to be candle. What is a one by two? Yeah, it's normally not. Don't worry. Um, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll you probably because a lot of people are kind of sign up. I should have got told my tech guy to be prepared for that. It's got a dedicated server though. It's weird. Uh, it's normally not that. Not like that. The code, can you train strategies in IRAs? Yeah, absolutely. Do you take PayPal? Uh, not right now. Most. One by twos can be kind of, can be margin intensive stuff? No. The link in here, the word option misspelled. Oh, that's why. Huh. Pit.com slash bootcamp. I'm sorry. That's called a typo, folks. There it is. <laughs> All right. So, and if you've got other questions, you can email me. That's impossible. If you didn't get the discount, so if, you, if for some reason you didn't get the discount, email me and I'll make sure I'll rebate the discount back. Yes, you can sign up when you get home this evening. Your email address, mark at optionpit.com. I want everybody to get the best price ever. All right. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Did you say one by twos? Yeah, one by two is a trade that kind of looks like this. So someone, let's say like Tesla. Yeah, kind of, but it, it, IV percentile is over a period of time. I look at vol and you know, you have to look at vol in short periods, one-year periods, and long, long-term periods, okay? Just because vol is now. 
What's the performance? Uh, we do post the, the results. I'd have to look at them. I know I, while I was gone for, I was gone doing this consulting gig for the last 10 months, I know they had a rough time in the first quarter, and uh, we've righted the ship since then. Oh, um, isn't IV percentile and toss the same as the vol you're showing? Yeah. When you're speaking of underlying vol, are you speaking the basic vol or is it related specifically to the option? Um, basic vol. And then once so, when you're building a trade, you start with basic vol, then you look at the, the, term, the skew structure and the term structure. All right, so first, is vol high or low? Second, what does... How do, how do we learn to use Live Vault? Well, you just sign up for their execution service. Um, it, it's pretty easy. It's, actu it's actually really user intuitive. Do you check put call ratio for entry exit? I have never in my life ever looked at a put call ratio. And most peop and people that look at those are kidding themselves. It's a waste. A massive, massive, massive waste of time. Now, the, the, where I will look at put call ratio is to find large block trades. See, and I didn't even try and sell you anything else, right? All right. Any other questions? Cool. Well, hopefully, um, I will, so tomorrow I'll email out the slides, and I'll, uh, Hal Knight, when speaking of underlying vol, are you speaking to basic vol or related specific to the option? That's what I was just saying. In the class, we'll use TOS for the demos. Probably, we'll use a lot of Thinkorswim. We use a lot of Thinkorswim and a lot of Live Vol. Those are the two best platforms. I'm not Andrew, I'm Mark, but Andrew is, is going to work there. What is a one by two? Sorry, yeah. So let's say that, or here, we'll look at NVIDIA. I'll show you a one by two trade. All right. This is a, a type trade that I'm, I kind of like. So here we are, vol's coming up. Go all. And vol's high, and I think the underlying is going to going to rally. So what I buy is I buy the 18 calls and then I sell two of the 18 and a halfs against it. And then for margin, you know, I might go out and buy like a, a 20 call or something like that. But in this case, but most of the time I don't. Um, if I'm to, and it looks like this. All right. So we're going to drop vol 75% and we'll move the date to, and you can see uh, NVIDIA is now up 4%, you know, somewhere around here. I'm making, you know, right around 18 and a half bucks. I'm making $34. If I move it to tomorrow, yeah, I mean, I do really well in between 18 and 19. And the best part is I don't have to pay to be long. And I can get the broken wing if I buy the one up here. Pull that risk chart back up. See I can I can now put a little defined risk on the on the whole trade. That's a one by two. All right. Um, we're going to talk about what does that involve to make that trade. It's iron butterflies, iron condors, uh, probably the billing address. Um, 
they want to know for the dress, should I use my home address or the billing? Do the, do the billing. Um, it, you know, it, it's really about kind of premium, premium harvesting, selling condors, selling, buying calendars, selling butterflies, one by twos, front spreads, things like that. Pretty simple. All right, guys. Well, hopefully I see a bunch of you there. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys have a great day. Um, I'm going to email the recording out tomorrow. Everybody have a great evening.